I had COVID-19. The loss of taste and smell was one of the worst periods I had to ever deal with in my life because it completely diminished my appetite. Even if I was hungry, I didn't eat any foods during this period because it all tasted like nothing. My taste was at a complete 0%. This loss of taste and smell lasted for about 5-6 to six days. Although I have overcome this battle with COVID-19, it was definitely a time of fear and uncertainty for my family and I. Currently, I'm happy it is over with, but also have paranoid feelings that it may happen again. On today's episode of Demystifying Medicine, COVID-19, the loss of taste and smell. In December of 2019, the first case of the novel coronavirus was detected in Wuhan, China. In March of 2020, the virus has since spread across the world, labeling it a worldwide pandemic. This virus is transmitted through respiratory droplets, which can come from a sneeze or a cough. Droplets can be inhaled through close contact with an infected individual or through indirect contact with contaminated objects or surfaces. Specifically, two symptoms that coronavirus carriers may experience is a loss of taste and a loss of smell. You might be asking yourself, well, how common is the loss of taste and smell? A study that looked at data from eight studies found that 81.3% and 64.9% of positive COVID-19 patients had a loss of taste and smell, respectively. Interestingly, the loss of taste and smell were found to be more common in women and young individuals. It should be noted that the first three days of infection is when a loss of taste and smell may appear, and this symptom may last up to an average of eight days. Overall, the data suggests that this may be a potential early indicator of COVID-19 development. The data presented in this video is still under review. These are just some of the proposed mechanisms of what is known so far. You might be asking, what is a virus? Well, a virus is a small particle that contains genetic material and invades organisms to cause infection. Viruses' main priority is to replicate and survive as it can only thrive in a living organism. In this case, humans. The life cycle of a virus first starts with entering the cell, also known as viral entry. It attaches onto a receptor found on the surface of the cell to be accepted. Second is genome replication. Once the virus is inside, it hijacks the host machinery, kind of like stealing a photocopy machine. Normally, the cell uses the machinery to copy genetic information and make things that are needed for cell function. Instead, when the host machinery is hijacked by the virus, it uses a photocopy machine to make more copies of itself. The last step is viral release. The virus will be released from the body and invade other cells. This cycle repeats and the virus continues to infect the body. COVID-19 is a respiratory virus, which means it can cause infection in the organs that help you breathe. It can enter through the eyes, nose, mouth, and through respiratory droplets. So, with all of this in mind, how does COVID-19 cause people to lose their sense of smell and taste? Let's first take a closer look at the proposed mechanism of loss of smell by Bran et al. Imagine, someone who is affected by COVID sneezes on you, and the COVID virus travels to your nasal passage entering your nose. The human nose is made up of nasal cells that are vulnerable to infection. These cells are found in the olfactory epithelium, which is a specialized region in the nose that allows us to smell different odors. Like many other cells in our body, these cells express a receptor known as ACE2. Receptors are proteins that bind with molecules to transmit a signal on the body, which are needed for physiological processes. It is the key to viral entry. Once the virus attaches onto the receptor, it gains access to the cell. A receptor is like an intercom system of an apartment building. A person outside will contact you through the intercom and you will receive this message. When you answer, you can determine an appropriate response. So once COVID-19 enters the nasal cavity, it needs to bind onto the receptor to enter the cell. COVID is able to bind to the ACE2 receptors because it fits to the receptor like a key. Once again, the virus is at the intercom, representing ACE2 and has the right code to access the person inside who will allow the virus in. Now, the virus is able to enter the cell as ACE2 is the key to opening the door for viral entry and replication. 
In the nose, COVID enters supporting cells via the ACE2 receptors, and these cells provide support for the neurons in the nose. Due to infection, these cells become non-functional and are not able to support the neurons. As a result, it indirectly affects the neurons' ability to send odor information to the brain, ultimately inhibiting our perception of smell. Well, what about taste? How is it affected? Currently, the mechanism of how COVID-19 affects taste is not certain. However, we are going to focus on one proposed mechanism of many theories by Eshargi et al. and Khan et al. Taste buds regenerate every 10 days. However, when COVID invades our cells, an immune response is activated. An immune response is when the body is alerted due to a foreign invader and activates a course of action to fight off the invader. This is like an intruder entering your home, and as a response, you defend yourself and fight back. In this case, inflammation is the result of an immune response that occurs in the body from COVID-19 infection. Because of this inflammation, our taste buds are unable to regenerate, so the lifespan of the taste buds decrease. So, this is what has been proposed for why we may experience a loss of taste and smell. However, COVID-19 is a rapidly evolving area of research. There is still a lot that is not well understood, and there are many other proposed mechanisms that are currently under investigation. Further evaluation and research is most definitely necessary to make any conclusive statements on the subject matter. Now that you know all about COVID-19 and the loss of taste and smell, we hope that you are more informed about the early symptoms and its indicators. Please follow the health and safety guidelines implemented in your area by checking your government website or the World Health Organization website.